Live from New York, it's theCUBE, covering Big Data NYC 2015. Brought to you by Hortonworks, IBM, EMC, and Pivotal. Now, your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hello everyone, welcome back to Live in New York City for theCUBE, our special Big Data NYC our flagship program, go out to the events, and expect a signal from the noise. We are here live as part of Strata Hadoop Big Data NYC. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Jim Pigley, the Chief Product Officer at Disco. Welcome back to theCUBE, great to see you. Thanks, great to be here. Um, you've been COO of Disco, Head of Marketing, now Chief Product Officer for a few years. Um, you guys have always had the patent, patents David was on earlier. I asked him specifically, why doesn't the other guys just do what you do? And I want you to comment deeper on that because he had a great answer, he said patents. Uh, but you guys do something that's really hard that right. people can't do. So let's get into it because Fusion is a big announcement you guys made. Big deal with EMC, a lot of traction with that. And it's one of these things that is kind of talked about but not talked about. It's really a big deal. So what is the reason why you guys are so successful on the product side? Well, I think you know, first of all, it starts with the technology that we have patented, and it's this true active-active replication capability that we have. Um, other software products claim to have active-active replication, but when you drill down on what they're really doing, typically what's happening is they'll have a set of servers that they replicate across, and you can write a transaction at any server, but then that server is responsible for propagating it to all of the other uh, servers in the implementation. And there's no mechanism for uh, pre-agreeing to that transaction before it's actually written. So there's no way to avoid conflicts up front. Um, there's no way to effectively handle scenarios where some of the servers in the implementation go down um, while the replication is in process. And very frequently those solutions end up requiring administrators to do periodic resynchronization, go back and manually find out what didn't take and deal with all the deltas. Whereas we offer guaranteed consistency and um, effectively what happens is with us you can write at any server as well, uh, but the difference is we go through um, a peer-to-peer -peer agreement process and it, once a quorum of the servers in the implementation agree to the transaction, they all accept it and we make sure everything is written uh, in the same order on every server. And every server knows the last good transaction it processed so if it goes down at some point in time, as soon as it comes back up, it can grab all the transactions it missed during that time slice while it was offline, um, resync itself automatically without an administrator having to do anything. And you can use that feature not only for um, network and server outages that cause downtime, but even for planned maintenance, which is one of the biggest uh, causes of Hadoop uh, availability issues, because obviously if you've got a global deployment, uh, when it's midnight on Sunday in the US, it's the start of the business day on Monday in Europe, and then it's the middle of the afternoon in Asia. So if you take Hadoop clusters down, um, somebody somewhere in the world is going to be going without their applications and data. It's interesting, I want to get your comments on this because that's, that's a great highlight into the next conversation we've been hearing all throughout the Cube this week is analytics, outcomes. These are the kind of things that people talk about because that means there's checks being written. Hadoop right. is moving into production. People have done the clusters. It used to be the conversation of, hey, X number of clusters, you do this, you do that, replication here and there, yarn, all these different buzzwords, really feeds and speeds. Now, Hadoop is relevant, but it's kind of invisible, it's under the hood. Right. Yet it's part of other things in the network. So high availability, non-disruptive operations is what are table stakes now. So I want you to talk about that nuance because that's what we're, we're seeing as the things that are powering. It's the engine of Hadoop deployments. What, does, what is that? Take us through that nuance because that's one of the things that you guys have been doing a lot of work in that's making it reliable and stable to actually go out and play with Hadoop, deploy it, make sure it's always on. Well. We really come into play when companies are moving Hadoop out of the lab and into production. When they have defined application SLAs, um, when they can only have so much downtime, and it may be uh, business requirements, it may be regulatory compliance issues, for example, financial services. They pretty much always have to have their data available. They have to have a solid backup of the data. 
that's a hard requirement for them to put anything into production in their data centers. The other use case we've been hearing is, okay, I got Hadoop, I've been playing with it, now I need to scale it up big time. I got to double, triple my, my clusters, I got to put it in with my applications. Then the conversation is, okay, wait, do I need to do more sysadmin work? How do you address that particular piece? Because I think that's what, where I think Fusion comes in from how I'm reading it, but is that a Fusion value proposition? Is it a WAN disco thing? And what does the customer, and is that happening? Yeah, so um, there's actually two angles to that. And the first is, how do we maintain that uptime? How do we make sure there's performance availability to meet the SLAs, the production SLAs? Um, the active-active replication that we have patents for, uh, that I described earlier, and it's embodied in our DECO and distributed coordination engine, is at the core of Fusion. And once a Fusion server's installed with each of your Hadoop clusters, that active-active replication capability is extended to them. And we expose the HCFS API, um, so the client applications, you know, Scoop, Flume, Impala, Hive, anything that would normally run against a Hadoop cluster would talk through us. If it's been defined for replication, we do the active-active replication of it. If pass straight through and process normally on the local cluster. So how does, how does that address the issues you were talking about? Um, what you're getting by default with our active-active replication is effectively continuous hot backup. That means if one cluster or an entire data center goes offline, that data exists elsewhere, your users can fail over, uh, they can continue accessing the data running their applications. As Soon as that cluster um, comes back online, it resyncs automatically. Now, what's the other? No involve, no user involvement. No, no user admin. involvement in that. Um, now, the only time, um, and this gets back into what I was talking about earlier, if I take servers offline for planned maintenance, upgrade the hardware, the operating system, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, yeah. um, I can take advantage of that feature, as I was alluding to earlier. I can take the servers of the entire cluster offline, and um, Fusion knows the last good transactions that were processed on that cluster. As soon as the admin turns it back on, it'll resync itself automatically. So that's how you avoid downtime even for planned maintenance if you have to take an entire location off. Now, to your other question, how do you scale this stuff up? Think about what we do. We eliminate idle standby hardware because everything is full read-write. You don't have standby read-only backup clusters and servers when we come into the picture. So let's say we walk into an existing implementation and they've got two clusters. One is the active cluster where everything's being written to, read from, actively um, being accessed by users. The other's just simply taking snapshots or periodic backups or they're using disk CP or something else, but they really can't get full utilization out of that. We come in with our active-active replication capability and they don't have to change anything, but what suddenly happens is as soon as they define what they want replicated, we'll replicate it for them initially to the other clusters. They don't, they don't have to pre-sync it. And the cluster that was formerly for disaster recovery for backup is now live and fully usable. So guess what? I've now been able to scale up to twice my original implementation by just leveraging that formerly read-only backup cluster. That is I there a lot using. of configuration involved in that? Is it automatically? No, so basically what happens, again, um, you don't have to synchronize the clusters in advance. Um, the way we replicate is uh, based on this concept of um, folders. And you can think of a folder as basically a collection of files and subdirectories that roll up into um, root directories effectively that reflect, mm -hmm. you know, typically particular applications and that people are using with Hadoop or uh, groups of users that have uh, data sets that they access uh, for their various sets of applications. And you define the replicated folders, basically a high-level directory that consists of everything um, in it. And um, as soon as you do that, what we'll do automatically in a new implementation, let's keep it simple, um, let's say you just have two clusters, two locations, we'll replicate that folder in its entirety to the target you specify, and then from that point on, we're just moving the deltas over the wire. So you don't have to do anything in advance. And then suddenly that backup um, hardware is fully usable, and you've doubled the size of your implementation. You've yes. scaled up to 2x. So, I mean, what you were describing before um, really strikes me that w the way you tell uh, the complexity of a product and the value of a product in this space is what happens when something goes wrong? Yep. Right? That's the question you always ask. Uh, how do you recover? Because recovery is the very hard thing and your patents, are you got a lot of math <laughs> in, right. inside there. But you also said something that's interesting which is you're an asset utilization play. Right. You're being able to go in relatively simply 
and say, okay, you've got this asset that's underutilized, I'm now going to give you back you know, some capacity that's on the floor and take advantage of that. Right, and you're able to scale up without spending any more on hardware and infrastructure, so. So I'm interested in, so another company, you, you announced an EMC partnership mm -hmm. uh, this week, and they sort of got into this way back in the mainframe days with mm -hmm. SRDF. I always thought when I first heard about when Disco said, it's like SRDF or Hadoop, but it's active active. Right. So they, then they bought that yada yada. And, so and there's no distance limitations with our active active. And that, so what's yeah. the nature of the relationship with EMC? Okay, so basically EMC, like the other storage vendors that want to play in the Hadoop space, expose uh, some form of an HDF API. And in fact, um, if you look at uh, Hortonworks or Cloudera, if you go and look at Cloudera Manager, one of the things it asks you when you're installing it is are you going to run this on regular HDFS storage, you know, effectively a bunch of commodity boxes typically, or are you going to use the MCI salon or the, the various other options? And um, what we're able to do is replicate across Hadoop clusters running on iSalon, running on uh, EMC ECS, running on standard HDFS, and what that allows these companies to do is without modifying um, those storage systems without migrating that data off of them, incorporate it into an enterprise-wide data lake, if that's what they want to do, and selectively replicate across all those different storage systems. Uh, it could be a mix of uh, different Hadoop distributions. You could have replication between CDH, HDP, uh, Pivotal, MapR. All of those things, including um, EMC storage that I uh, just mentioned, that was mentioned in the press release, Isilon and ECS effectively has a Hadoop compatible API support. And we can create, in effect, a single um, virtual cluster out of all of those different platforms. So, what, so is it a go-to-market relationship? Is it a, an OEM deal? Or? Yeah, I mean, it was really born out of the fact that we have some mutual customers uh -huh. that want to do exactly what I just described. They have you know, standard Hortonworks or Cloudera um, deployments in-house. They've got data running on Isilon, um, and they wanted to uh, deploy uh, a data lake that includes uh, what they've got stored on Isilon with what they've got in HDFS and Hadoop. Right. And, in a, and replicate across that. Like onerous EMC certification yeah, we, process. Yeah, we went through that process. We actually um, set up environments uh, in our labs uh, where we had EMC Isilon and ECS running and did demonstration integrations, replication across Isilon to uh, HDP to Hortonworks, Isilon to Cloudera, uh, ECS to Isilon to HDP and, and Cloudera and so forth. So um, we did prove it out. Uh, they saw that. In fact, they they lent us um, boxes to uh, actually do this in our labs. So they were they were very motivated, and and um, they're seeing us in some of their bigger accounts. Talk about the um, aspect of two things: non-disruptive operations, meaning I got to want to deploy stuff because now that Hadoop has kind of got a hardened top with some abstraction layer, with analytics to focus. There's a lot of work going on under the hood, as you said. And a large scale enterprise might have a zillion versions of Hadoop. They might have little Hortonworks here, they might have something over here, so there might be some diversity in the distributions. That's one thing. And the other one is operational disruption. Right. What do you guys do there? Is it zero disruption? And how do you deal with multiple versions of, of the distro? Okay, so um, basically what we're doing, the simplest way to describe it is we're providing a common API across all of these um, different distributions, um, running on different storage platforms and so forth, so that the client applications are always interacting with us. They're not worrying about the nuances of the particular Hadoop APIs that these different things expose. So we're providing a layer of abstraction effectively. So um, we're transparent in effect in that sense, operationally, once we're installed. Uh, the other thing is, and I mentioned this earlier, you know, we come in, um, basically, you don't have to precinct clusters, you don't have to make sure they're all the same versions or the same distros or any of that. Um, just install us, select the data that you want to replicate. We'll replicate it over initially um, to the target clusters, and then from that point on, you know, you just go. It just, it, it just works. And um, we talked about the core patent for active active replication. We've got other patents that have been approved, three patents now and seven pending, applications pending, that allow this active active replication to take place while servers are being added and removed from implementations without disrupting uh, user access or running applications and so forth. 
Final question for you. Sum, sum up the show this week. What's the vibe here? What's it? What's the aroma? Is it really Hadoop next? What is the overall big data NYC uh, story here at Strata Hadoop? Uh, what's the main theme that you're seeing coming out of the show? I, th I think the main theme that we're starting to see, it's, it's twofold. I think one is we are seeing more and more companies uh, moving this into production. There's a lot of interest in you know, Spark and, and the whole fast data concept. And I don't um, think that Spark is, is necessarily um, orthogonal to Hadoop at all. I think the two have to coexist. I mean, if you think about Spark streaming and the whole fast data concept, um, basically, uh, Hadoop provides the historical data at rest, it provides the historical context, the streaming data provides the point in time information. Um, what Spark together with Hadoop allows you to do is that real time analysis, do the real time informed decision making, but do it within a historical context ins instead of a single point in time vacuum. Mm -hmm. So I think what's happening, and you notice the vendors themselves aren't saying, oh it's all Spark, forget Hadoop or anything like that, they're really talking about so. Mm. All right, Jim from Wan Disco, Chief Product Officer, really in the trenches, talking about what's under the hood and making it all scale in the infrastructure so those analysts can hit the scene. Great to see you again. Thanks for coming and sharing your insight here on theCUBE. Live in New York City, we are here, day two of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Big Data NYC in conjunction with Strata. We'll be right back with more live coverage in the moment here in New York City after this short break. <laughs>